And I'm going to, I, like, it's like I'm putting out my paintbrush is licking the top of the paint pile, which sounds weird, but that's exactly what I'm doing with the paintbrush. So you'll notice I'm kind of holding the paintbrush to the back. I'm using the, my bristles and I'm just like lick, lick, licking the top of the chunks of paint, but I want paint to mix into the water that's in my paintbrush, okay? I am then going to paint this in with the paint that's on my brush. If I find that it doesn't flow very easily or my paintbrush bristles are coming all apart and they look like a bad hair day, that means I don't have enough water and I just need to dip my brush up in a little bit more water to flow a little better. In order for watercolor paint to work, you have to have water. It's a necessary, okay? We talked about this, but this um, is also a way to beautify your folder. So if I want, I can um, like drag the color out in some fun way. I have a few examples that'll pull up on the board. I can get off into the distance, however I want to make that decorative. Now, water paint works with the water. What that means for you as somebody painting with watercolor, grab a little, okay? It means that I can't go and paint yellow green right now because I do that they will mix together. The color travels with the water. So I can show you that here, that we have to skip around. So I'm gonna take and paint my yellow, right? Just like I did on my palette out there, or my, and now I have a yellow green in here, because remember I had green in my thing, and this is gonna be a great yellow green, but if I paint it right away next to, these are just gonna blend together they will become one new color that mixes with each other, okay? So I can't put wet paint next to wet paint because the paint travels the water. So very dramatically, I can take a different color and you can see what happens to that paint, okay? Water color moves with the water, okay? So you cannot put wet paint next to wet paint Unless, of course, you're making this effect happen, which we will do sometimes. But right now, my color wheel, I want it to be very structured and very organized. I don't want this kind of folder right now while I'm making my color wheel, because I want each of the color an individual color. So what that means is today, right now, I'm gonna have to jump around a little bit. So I can jump now and I can do kitten licks on top of my blue pile. And I can jump over here to blue. I should have fairly vibrant. If my color looks super faded out, I have too much water, okay? Um, if my color looks super, super dark, like you can see where you can still see blue, but it's a really nice bright blue, okay? If it's super, super dark and thick, that means I'm using too much paint and I need to use more water. Those are probably some of the most common things that happen when we first start painting with watercolor. So I have a yellow, I have my fake green, right? So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. You see I cleaned off a little spot on my palette. I'm gonna do the lick lick thing on my blue and I'm gonna put a little puddle of my blue out here on my mixing tray. I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna wash out my paintbrush so that my blue paint is gone because that's how my pile of yellow was green in the first place. But try not to have that happen. And I'm gonna lick, lick, lick off my yellow out here. So anybody have a guess, why did I not put it right away in my blue? Anybody? Which of these colors, like if they were arm wrestling, which color would win? Which color seems more powerful? blue, right? So if I move my yellow into my blue, it's not going to change my the weakling of the colors, okay? So what I need to do instead is move a little bit of my blue into my yellow so that I can mix the color a little bit at a time and adjust, okay? Again, this beautiful yellow green. Oh, oh it's still wet. It's still not ready but I can save it, right? I don't have to mix in that same pile. Do you see how I scoot it over? Because I know I'm gonna need that color. So I wanna save that color. But I'm gonna mix in a little bit more of this, a little bit more of this blue until I have a color that just feels great.
green. Green is not too blue, it's not too yellow, it's just green. And now because we're gonna skip around, I could maybe put a little bit more blue in that. Not too bad. I can now paint my green section. So you'll notice I don't, because it's the water that's doing the painting, I don't have to push down on my brush. I'm just being very gentle, like the bristles don't move. And now I have to wait again. So I get to sk keep skipping around. So I could wash my paintbrush out. Now the cool thing about this is, is that these will dry, right? Remember all the crusty dry paint on my paintbrush, my paint palette. All I have to do to reactivate this paint is add what? Water. Makes this great yellow green, but my spot for yellow green is not ready at wet paint problems. But my color is ready to go, and it will stay there until I put more water on it. Right now it's wet. If I tip this all over, it'll mix. But if I leave it, it'll be dry tomorrow. I'll be able to put a little water on there, move it into my color wheel. Okay? You will work your way around the color wheel by skipping spots. Okay? Probably dry. Like my yellow is starting to be dry enough now that I can paint next to it. My green, still really wet. But maybe by the time I paint the red, it might be okay enough to paint. Okay? Your job is to paint the color wheel with watercolor. Not too dark, not too painty, not too faded. You have a couple of these at your table. I have another pile of them at the back, just for reference. You can see all the colors. I will also staple up on the wall all of the folders um, that I so you'll be able to see some different examples of using. Um